Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Fillmore Auditorium in beautiful San Francisco! Please welcome Laura Keitlinger! Too kind. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure everybody tells you this, but you have a beautiful city. But you know what? I was <laughs> I was sitting in this park this afternoon, and I was watching a, a young dad just playing catch with his two little sons. I thought, oh, that's nice. And then all of a sudden, the mom comes over, starts swearing at her husband, and then she hits the two kids and takes the ball and throws it into a garbage can. And <laughs> That just really hurt me to see because my mom never did anything with us. <laughs> and, uh, <yeah. laughs> oh man, I, you know, I saw my mom just recently. We were in New York together and we stayed in the, ho the same hotel, in the same room, in the same bed. <laughs> That's right, because we're queer. No. <laughs> It's, it's because, you know, a good night's sleep is for the idle rich. It's just not done in my family. Separate rooms, we're just not good enough for, apparently. So anyway, so I'm sleeping with my mother, and uh, at 2 o'clock... How many times have you said that? <laughs> not a lot, I hope. No. So anyways, we're in bed together, and at 2 o'clock in the morning, my mom turns to me and says, I didn't think that salad was so great. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Do you mean the salad that you had eight hours ago? That's keeping us both up? She said, I'm just saying, I didn't think it was so great. And I said, well, I'm glad you told me. Because I would have gone to sleep thinking the salad was fine. And, uh, you know, since we're being honest, I didn't think my childhood was so great. <laughs> Now, good night and stop spooning me. It's too little, too late. <laughs> and I, I actually, I saw my mom again recently. I live in LA now. And uh, she came to visit me with her husband. And I took them out to dinner. And then on uh, the way back to the uh, room that we were all sharing, I said, um, <laughs> so what do you think of LA so far? And my mom said, well, I should have had the chicken. <laughs> I was like, Jesus. I said, life is full of missed opportunities, isn't it? Do you remember that time I got thrown from that horse and I could have been dragged to my death, but I let go of the reins? <laughs> Christ, I kick myself every day for that one. <laughs> you know, it's sad. Um, most of the women in my family married for money, but not a lot of money. It's the lamest empire of destruction anyone's ever seen. In fact, you can't go to a reading of a will in my family without somebody saying, so who's getting the tools? <laughs> and I was thinking like my childhood was so painfully dull. I remember being nine years old and taking a magnet through the house to see what it would stick to. <laughs> and then logging the data. You know, so if something happened to me, I guess it was proof that you could die of boredom. Uh, so it was really sad. And actually, I went home recently because uh, I had to attend my grandmother's funeral. And my relatives had put little trinkets and mementos in her casket. And, uh, you know, I just, and not, not because we're, you know, not because we're white trash, because we're pharaohs. Let me just <laughs> straighten that. I saw you thinking that it was something else. A little known fact about the Keitlingers. <laughs> uh, but it was so sad. You know, you know, I guess, you know, they're thinking these were items that she needed for her journey. You know, like a, there was a painted mirror in there. So she could look at it and say, God, I look dead today. 
going on? So, but it just, it horrified me. It looked bad. And, and then on top of it, I couldn't tell if my magnet was sticking because of the casket or the tools inside it. How do you know? You know, my friend told me that since I was close to my grandmother, that she might visit me in my dreams. And I thought that would be amazing. I would really love that. But then I thought, well, God, how can I be sure she'd visit during the right one? And I'd be like, oh no, oh no, oh God damn it. Oh no, all right, all right. everybody just get dressed. I, my, my grandma's here, I can't, oh. Grandma, I, Grandma, this is, I'm sorry, this is so embarrassing. I, ah, oh, jeez, I, all right. Grandma, this is Johnny Depp, and, uh, <laughs> These are the Barbie twins. It, it, it's not what you think. I, I was just watching. I, oh, God, I'm sorry. Just... I do, you know what? I do wish I were more of a spiritual person, though. I'm always fascinated uh, when people have religious experiences in their lives. Like a few months ago, there was a man in Spain who saw the hand of the statue of the Jesus bleeding. And then right after that, a girl in Italy saw the Virgin Mary crying. And I have to tell you, I think it's happened to me. I was at the Bob's Big Boy in Pasadena. And I saw liquid rust coming out of the butt of the Big Boy icon. And uh, when you see it yourself, it's like, all right. Whew. It's at that moment you realize just how insignificant you really are. I was watching this talk show, and uh, these three people came out and started talking about their failed attempts at suicide. And then, after each person spoke, they flashed a 1-900 number so you could call in. And I'll tell you, I was so moved by what was said that I called, and I voted for the first guy. <laughs> but you know what I thought was interesting? They said that 10% of all suicides are unintentional, which I attribute to autoerotic asphyxiations. That's what they must be. And you know, you know what that is, right? It's like when you're in search of the ultimate orgasm, you can find it in a near-death experience. Yeah. Throw in some crying and you know what I've done for the past six years. No, um, no apparently it just happens to, uh, you know, teenage boys and members of parliament. And, uh, I just think that's a pretty high risk to take for a few moments of pleasure. To think that the last thing you might wind up doing on Earth is almost climaxing. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Ow, 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 wait, oh yeah, oh wait, oh wait, I almost, oh shit. Oh, that salad wasn't so great. I actually got an obscene phone call a couple of weeks ago in the middle of the day. This guy called in the afternoon, and he said, good afternoon. I want to lick you all over, spank your ass, and ride you till you beg for more. I said, well, that's a nice offer, but I've already got a long distance company. You know what, though? Honestly, if anyone tries to sell me anything over the phone, I'll buy it, because I feel so bad for people like in telemarketing. I did that once, and I just think it sucks. That's like one of the worst jobs you could have. There, you know, ab actually, the absolute, to me, the absolute worst job, which I've never had, thank God, is delivering food. To me, that's got to be the worst. Because when you think about it, if you're delivering food to someone, you, know, you don't know what's going to open the door, you know? And if it were me, I think if I were on my way to someone's house, I'd be thinking, you know, what the hell is wrong with this person that they can't even leave to feed themselves? <laughs> so, whenever I have food ordered in, I try to decide what would be the worst way to come to the door. And I've decided that it's tied to a chair. <laughs> you know? That way they open the door, I've got the money in my mouth. <laughs> well... Hi, I guess my boyfriend's in one of his moods again. <laughs> you know, he's really great. He loves me. It's just, oh my God, here he comes. Run, he's got a knife. <laughs> Hi, 
I actually, to my own credit, I guess, I have never gone out with an abusive boyfriend. But I think it's because I keep going out with the same guys again and again and again. And that is, that is, I'm so embarrassed about that. You know, I break up with someone and then I go back out with them again. It's like having a garage sale and buying your own shit back. <laughs> it's so big. So now I'm back with my old boyfriend, and it's the same old problems. Nothing's changed. But you know what? I think a lot of it is because I'm so annoying. Like, I, I'm one of these people. I've got to, I'm always, like, 50 minutes to an hour, hour and a half early to anything before it starts. And I actually, the last time I saw him, I went out. We went to a movie, and I lied to him about when it started so that we were both early. And he just lost it. He's like, God damn it. You always do this. You know, you're always early because you're just afraid you're going to miss something. That proves you've got low self-esteem and no concept of your own self-worth. And I said, so what? You don't want to pee on me now? I feel bad sometimes because all, you know, I'm still in bad relationships and all of my friends are already like headlong into bad marriages. And uh, I was thinking, you know, every single one of my friends from high school has long since tied the knot, you know? And I'm getting older. I guess I should think about hanging myself. <laughs> um, all my friends have babies too. I, I have a friend that I used to talk to all the time. Now she has, she has a, a three-year-old son. And I called her and, and just to, you know, say hello. And I was like, hey, Linda, how's it going? Oh, good. Oh, just a second. Jacob wants to say hi to you. Say hi, Jacob. Jacob, say hi. Jacob, say hi to Laura. Say hi, Jacob. Jacob, say hi. Say hi. Say hi, Jacob. Jacob, say hi. Jacob, say hi to Laura. Say hi. 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 Honey, say hi. I was like, say hi, goddammit. But you know what? The kid has never said hello to me. And I'm starting to think that maybe he's not even there. You know? And you know, what keeps me from pretending that I've got a kid? You know, she did this to me again, and this time I hung up the phone. And then she called back and she said, what happened? And I said, oh, <laughs> my kid hung up the phone. Said, oh, I didn't know you had a kid. Yeah, I got a little daughter named Katie. Katie, say hi. Say hi, Katie. Katie, say hi. Say hi, Katie. Katie. You know, I, um, I've actually, I've thought about having a family. I just haven't seen any that really appeal to me. Uh, actually, I've sort, of come, I've sort of come close to it. I, uh, I was going out with a guy who was living with his parents. And he was 30. And I thought, ah, oh, he's broke, I don't care, whatever, it doesn't bother me. But then I realized it did, because I went home with him one night, and I realized that we were in his bed. I mean, you know, the bed that he grew up in. Yeah. And then, like, three feet away from us were his parents in, their be in the bedroom that they grew up in. <laughs> and I just, oh, that kind of, like, upset me. And plus, he's one of these, you know, kind of a shut-in guy that just watches too much porn. So he's really loud and <laughs> saying all these cliché sex things and all the wrong ones. Like, he kept, he, you know, he's like, oh, my God, you're so big. You're so big. Oh, my God, you're so big. Really? Come on. I'm just average. <laughs> huh? Think so? Ha <laughs> uh, ha! No. Uh, so anyways, eventually it just crescendoed into the worst thing anybody could say, the most embarrassing thing in the world. He started saying, Mommy! 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 And I was dying of embarrassment because I realized he was calling for his mother. <laughs> so she comes running in. She's standing there. She doesn't know what to think. You know, I'm there naked, and her son's crying. <laughs> and all I can come up with to say is, I, 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 oh, well, he started it. <laughs> so then... <laughs> well, eventually, she called my mom and had her pick me up. Anyway, um, I guess that's not a very sexy story, is it? I guess at this point, I'll, I'll probably never get to play a prostitute in a film. 
which is my goal. I'm so tired of it. God, when did the whore craze start? It's like every woman you see in a film is a prostitute. I think, you know what? I think it was Pretty Woman was the first one. And then Indecent Proposal, and then Showgirls, and Striptease, and Sense and Sensibility. When's it going to end? <laughs> you know? And I'm just tired of it. And, and it's so bad, too, because all these movies are saying is that the highest goal a woman can reach is to sleep with a rich man. And that's just such a small part of it. <laughs> But I live in L.A., so I guess I deserve it, you know, being bombarded with that kind of crap. I actually did something that I thought was very L.A. I backed into a car. Thank you. It was my, fir you know, it was my first accident. And I thought that when it happened that I'd just have this overwhelming, you know, feeling of fear and panic. But I didn't at all. In fact, I felt like this rush of raw power. And all I wanted was to do it again. <laughs> But of course I couldn't because the guy who happened to be in a BMW was out of his car and in my face in like two seconds. He was just like... <laughs> <laughs> I hope you've got insurance. And I was like, well, actually, I just moved here and I don't. What? And I was like, uh, well, you know... And so then I started lying because I thought he was going to implode. I was like, you know, well, I, I, you know, I don't have regular insurance. I mean, I, I might have something. So I find myself looking through my car in the glove compartment under the seats like I'm going to come up with something for him. And I was like, well, you, well, you know what? I've actually got a couple things in here that you could hit me with. Um, I've got a pair of clogs and a flashlight and a fly swatter. I know what. Why don't you hit me with a fly swatter? Yeah, that'll make you feel better, mister. Yeah, why don't you do that? Just hit me with a fly sweater. Yeah, right here. Right here in the moneymaker. Come on, Beamer, Weasel, Chicken. Come on. Hit me. Yeah, it'll make you feel like a man. Come on, pussy, pussy. Look at the mama's boy, everybody. Come on, hit me, hit me. Hit me right in the ass. Come on, pussy, do it. Do it. Let's see what you're made of. Come on, pussy pants. Teach me a lesson. So anyway, he got back in his car and he left. I knew he wouldn't do it. But you know what? I'm thinking I might just get car insurance rather than go through that every time. You know? What's the point of it? And then, oh, man, I just shouldn't be in a car. But I've been having car dreams. I had this dream that I was, like, driving down the freeway and slamming into everybody, just slamming into them from side to side, right to left, all the way down the freeway. Not hurting anyone, though, just knocking the phones out of their hands. All the way down, <laughs> slamming, slamming. <laughs> And it was one of those, like, psychosexual dreams because then I started yelling out my window, am I hurting you? Because if I am, I'll stop. But of course, I was going too fast to hear the answer. And yes, friends, that's happened to me. I've been with someone that said, am I hurting you? Because if I am, I'll stop. I go, well, I'm hurting, but it's not because of you. <laughs> it's the kind of hurt that all the gratuitous sex in the world couldn't heal. It's the kind of hurt that can only be healed by backing into a BMW and being hit with a fly swatter. <laughs> I hate to say it. No, but, oh God, it just kills me. You know, that's why I miss New York so much. You don't have to drive. You don't have to talk to people. You don't have to talk to people in New York because they'll talk to you anyway. They'll include you, whether you want to be or not. And, 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 and in New York, they have no problem with just telling you the most intimate details of, of their life at any time. People are just like that there. And I, kinda, I actually kind of like that. But I was, uh, I was in a deli, and this woman in front of me orders a decaf coffee. And the guy behind the counter says, decaf? She's like, oh, yeah. I can't have caffeine. It makes me crazy. <laughs> I pulled all my hair out of my head. This is a wig. This is a wig. Yeah. I just, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. No, it makes me nuts. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been touched since 1982. <laughs> Yep, my doctor says I need a lot of rest. Can't get enough rest. That's what my doctor says. Yeah, decap. <laughs> Holy shit. And, it, you know, and I knew that I was up next to share, and I thought, man, how am I going to top that one? So I said, um, all right, um, you know what? I'll have an apple, because an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And uh, my doctor said, I'm not listening to my body. And apparently he's right, because I got a couple of letters from it. <laughs> Yeah, the one from my anus really shocked me. It said, you're too nervous to be in show business. You've forced me to quit. You never know where you're going to be when your asshole walks out on you, but it, it hurt me. And of course, I got one from my, my vagina, too, and it just said, whatever happened to Jim? We won. 
brought Jim back. There's no point in even being here without Jim. And you know what? I don't even think it was my vagina's writing. And just the apple and a coffee. And scene. No, okay. <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, God. But you know what? When I lived in New York, I lucked out as far as the people I knew. I had an amazing neighbor. She was really great. Uh, she was an elderly woman, probably about 80, 85. And of all things, I found myself like in a politeness contest with her. It was really bizarre. Like, I turned my stereo down to be nice. So then she turned her radio down. Then I stopped talking on the phone late at night. So then she unplugged her phone. So then I stopped waking up to my loud alarm. So then she died in her sleep. <laughs> And that touched me, you know? <laughs> that somebody would be so kind. <laughs> so, uh, assisted suicide is now legal in New York. Yeah, finally! <laughs> Such a weird thing to clap for, I was thinking that. Yeah, whew, yeah, I think it's great. I'm gonna, you know, go up there this weekend, probably with a couple of my friends and check it out. You know, now that it's legal, yeah. <laughs> I actually, I, I don't usually go on road trips, you know, because I don't like to drive. But when I do sometimes, when I get out of the city, I always have an adventure. Like something good or strange always happens. I um, was driving through this town in, in Pennsylvania, and I stopped at a gas station. And the place was packed with people. It was like the most happening spot in all of Pennsylvania. And uh, anyways, I walked into the store area of the gas station, and immediately I knew something was wrong. There was broken glass everywhere and a cash register upside down on the floor. And out of the corner of my eye, I see the owner, and he is hogtied with an oily rag stuffed in his mouth and a bullet through the back of his head. <laughs> and I just said to myself, Jesus Christ, how could he do that to himself? <laughs> his business is booming. <laughs> and then all at once I realized the owner had a fear of success. It's incredible, isn't it? I don't understand that. I mean, I know that in life you don't always get everything that you've always dreamed of, but you always know someone who does. <laughs> and isn't that enough, folks? Yeah. No, no, it isn't. No, I always, I feel like I always get what I want five years after I want it, and then I have it for about two weeks. That's just the way it's been. I've been, uh, I've been fired a few times in my life. And that's fine, I think. In, in, a, in a lot of cases, it's only a little bit worse than getting hired. And uh, <laughs> I, you know what amazes me, though? In all the years of my getting fired, I've never met anyone with good advice. People consistently say the same thing. They always say, well, everything happens for a reason. <laughs> and I thought, well, as lame as that sounds, I guess it's better to hear it out loud. Because if you hear it in your own head, it starts to sound like, well, anything can happen with a razor. <laughs> but, you know, I think I'm just going to stop listening to other people's advice. I just listen to watching. Now, I, uh, I was dating this guy in AA, and he was always giving me advice, always giving me a phrase to, you know, get me through. And I don't think it ever helped. And, and it, actually, he kind of had a sad story. He said that he drank because his parents never gave him emotional support and, uh, you know, never encouraged him. And so, actually, when he asked me to come home and meet them one night, I, you know, I was be beyond excited. And it amazed me because his parents were just the ice-cold wasps that he had promised. It was <laughs> unreal. Like, no one even spoke to me until I was there for an hour. And then finally, at the dinner table, his mom says, so, how did the two of you meet? And I thought, oh, God, I've got to make this answer last. I've got to fill the room with it. This is really important. So I said, you know, well, it was by accident, really. I was working the pier with the other transsexuals. <laughs> and Dean pulled up next to me because he thought I was a boy. <laughs> anyway, we agreed on 20 bucks. And... He, then he said, how'd you like to do me a favor for an extra hundred? <laughs> so here I am, pretending to be the girlfriend of Mr. Nambla over here. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.